All living things need food. Food contains nutrients such as carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins and minerals which sustain life. The nutrients from the food enable us to grow, remain healthy and provide energy, carry out various life processes. Circulation of blood in the body, cleaning of blood by the kidneys, digestion of food we eat and breathing in, breathing out air are some of the life processes that help us live. The process by which living organisms obtain nutrients required for growth, repair and other life processes is called nutrition. Based on the way organisms obtain nutrition, they are grouped as autotrophs or heterotrophs. There are two modes of nutrition in plants, autotropic and heterotropic. The mode of nutrition in which an organism makes its own food from simple substances like carbon dioxide, water and minerals present in the surroundings is called autotropic nutrition. Example, green plants. Now, the mode of nutrition in which an organism cannot make its own food from simple substances but obtain ready-made food prepared by the green plants directly or indirectly is called heterotropic nutrition. Now, the organisms having autotropic mode of nutrition are called autotrophs while the organisms having heterotropic mode of nutrition are called heterotrophs. These autotrophs are also known as producers while the heterotrophs are known as consumers. Green plants are autotrophs and make their own food by the process of photosynthesis. The process by which the green plants make their own food from carbon dioxide and water by solar energy in the presence of chlorophyll is called photosynthesis. Here oxygen gas is released during photosynthesis. The term photosynthesis was actually given by Charles in the year 1893. Photo means light and synthesis means to build. Thus, photosynthesis means building up by light. Let's study in more detail. The food prepared by the green leaves of a plant is in the form of a simple carbohydrate called glucose. This glucose is synthesized in the leaves and then transported to different parts of the plant as sucrose by the phloem. The extra glucose is changed into complex carbohydrate called starch. This starch is stored in the leaves and other parts of the plant. Okay, now there are few materials required by the plants for photosynthesis. We will study one by one. So the first requirement is water and minerals. Now water and minerals are absorbed by the roots of the plant from the soil through the process called osmosis. Water and minerals are transported to the leaves and other parts of the plant by xylem vessels which run like pipes throughout the root, stem, branches and leaves. They form a continuous path or passage for the water and minerals to reach the leaves. Now the second requirement is carbon dioxide. Here the green plants take carbon dioxide gas from the air for carrying out photosynthesis. Tiny pores called stomata are present on the underside of the leaves. Now these pores are surrounded by guard cells. The guard cells control the opening and closing of stomata. The carbon dioxide gas enters the leaves of the plant through stomata. Now the next requirement for photosynthesis is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a green pigment present in the cell organelle called chloroplast. The green color of the plants is due to the presence of chlorophyll in them and it is mostly present in the green leaves of the plants. Chlorophyll traps the solar energy and this energy is used to synthesize food from carbon dioxide and water during the process of photosynthesis. There are leaves of some plants like croton have chlorophyll but they appear dark red in color. This is because the red pigment present in them hides the green color of the chlorophyll. So such leaves can also make food by the usual process of photosynthesis. The fourth requirement is sunlight. So here green plants synthesize food in the presence of sunlight. Chlorophyll present in the green leaves trap the solar energy. The solar energy is converted into chemical energy by the process of photosynthesis. Now the chemical energy is stored in the form of carbohydrate in plants. The leaves of plants grow in different patterns so as to catch the maximum amount of sunlight. 
Aquatic plants like hydrilla, water lily and valisneria take in carbon dioxide dissolved in water to prepare their food. They give out oxygen during the process. So, the major materials required for, by the plants for photosynthesis are water and minerals, carbon dioxide, chlorophyll and sunlight. We have just learned that plants synthesize carbohydrates through the process of photosynthesis. Now plants can also synthesize other components such as proteins and fats. So proteins are substances which contain nitrogen. But from where do the plants obtain nitrogen? Plants cannot use the nitrogen present in the atmosphere. They need nitrogen in a soluble form. So soil has certain bacteria called rhizobium bacteria which can take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into water soluble nitrogen components like nitrates and then release it into the soil. These nitrates are absorbed by the plants along with water. Also fertilizers are rich in nitrogen so plants absorb nitrogen from these fertilizers. Now plants also synthesize vitamins. Vitamins are found in vegetables, fruits and cereals. Till here we have completed the autotropic mode of nutrition. Now there are some plants which do not have chlorophyll. They cannot synthesize their food. Like humans and animals, such non-green plants depend on the food produced by other green plants. This is called heterotropic mode of nutrition. Let us study in detail how these heterotropic plants derive their nutrition. So broadly speaking, there are three modes of nutrition, saprotropic nutrition, parasitic nutrition and symbiosis. First, we will learn about saprotropic nutrition. So the mode of nutrition in which the non-green plants obtain their nutrients from dead and decaying organic matter of plants and animals are called saprotropic mode of nutrition. Now the plants which use saprotropic mode of nutrition are called saprophytes. Like for example, Indian pipe and coral root are coming under saprotropic mode of nutrition. The roots of saprophytes contain organisms called fungi. The fungi secrete digestive juices on the dead and decaying matter and convert into liquid that is used as a nutrient by the non-green plants. Now fungi like uh, mushrooms and yeast and bacteria are known as saprotrops. So fungi were earlier considered to be plants but due to the presence of some characteristics different from the plant they are no longer considered as plants. They form entirely different category of organisms and are considered as separate kingdom. Okay so the mode of nutrition in which some plants live in or on the body of other living organisms and derive their ready-made food from them is called parasitic nutrition. These parasites are divided into two total parasites or partial parasites. Like for example, cascuta is a total parasite and mistletoe is an example of partial parasite. Total parasites basically depend on the host entirely for food and water while partial parasites depend on the host for either water or nutritional requirement but not both together. The next mode of nutrition is symbiosis. So the association in which two different types of organisms live and work together for their mutual benefits is called symbiosis. Lichens and rhizobium show symbiotic relationship or symbiosis. A lichen is actually composed of two distinct organisms, algae and fungi, which live and work together. The algae contains chlorophyll and make their own food. The fungi shares the food made by the algae. Now the algae in return provide protection, water and minerals to the algae. Similarly, rhizobium bacteria live in the nodules of the roots of leguminous plants like pea and gram and provide them nitrogen in a soluble form. So in return, the plants provide food and shelter to the rhizobium bacteria. So both organisms benefit each other. So this is about symbiosis. Apart from uh, autotropic mode of nutrition and heterotropic mode of nutrition, there is a special mode of nutrition that is seen in plants. 
uh, few plants feed on insects for fulfilling their nitrogen requirements such insect eating plants are called insectivorous plants like pitcher plant Venus flytrap, Drosera are the examples of insectivorous plants. They are generally green plants. Therefore, they can prepare their own food. But for preparing proteins, they cannot get nitrogen from the surroundings. So, the insects on which they feed fulfill their nitrogen requirement. Like in pitcher plant, the leaf lamina is modified to form a pitcher-like structure. The apex of leaf is modified into lid which can open and close the mouth of the pitcher plant. Inside the pitcher, there is a hair which are directed downwards. When an insect lands on the pitcher, the lid closes and trapped insect gets entangled in the hair. The insect is digested by the juice secreted in the pitcher. So my dear children, this was about nutrition in plants. I hope you got a clarity of this. If you have any doubt, do ask in the comment section and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.